hello everybody good afternoon it is saturday the 26th of september i think 26th is. Yes. On the 25th. Saturday the 26th September anyway and we are off on our holidays. Are we excited? Yes we're excited. Very understatedly excited in Mr Matthew's case. I'm quite excited. We're off to Greece for eight nights. We're actually off to the airport now. It's a very nice sunny afternoon. We're flying from Gatwick because we're going to Helkadiki and you have to fly to Thessaloniki and the only airport that you can fly from, or the only, the nearest airport to us is um, Gatwick. But we're on our way up to the airport. We're staying overnight at the airport tonight and because we have an early flight in the morning, our flight is at six o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, so yeah, we decided to stay the night at the airport that makes it easier and I thought it would be interesting to do a vlog of just the traveling at this time because I thought you might be interested to see anybody who hasn't been away since Covid became a thing um, what it's like how things have changed how how it feels going through an airport and flying and all that sort of stuff I have to say I feel when we get to our hotel they do they Covid test us um, which is fine, I'm not nervous about that at all, but I feel slightly apprehensive about going on a plane, but it feels like it's worth it to get the holiday, if you know what I mean. We have booked the seats at the very front of the plane, row one, which I am absolutely sure makes zero difference to your chances of getting COVID. I'm not saying that keeps you any safer at all, but psychologically it feels a little bit safer. Um, you, you decided to do that, didn't you? Yeah, I thought it'd be nice to have everyone walking past us on the way onto the plane, <laughs> breathing all over <laughs> us. Uh, and so I chose those specific seats. Could be a big mistake. It's all right if you get on last though, I guess. Yes. They've already coughed all over your seat at that point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I see a flaw in your plan. In that case, the middle seats would have been better, wouldn't they? <laughs> There's a thought. But yeah, I, I don't think it makes a massive difference where you sit on a plane, to be honest. But um, it is what it is, isn't it? We shall see. It does look as though the flight is very empty. I would say it's about, when I looked at the availability of seats yesterday, I would say it's about a th between a third there's, and a there's half There's approximately oh, two people on the flight. <laughs> Not the captain and you. <laughs> no, you and me and the crew. Oh, no, there's more than that. Um, but it, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of empty seats. So um, I don't know if that's deliberate or just because less people are going on holiday. I, I'm guessing that the airlines would be filling the planes if they could because they need to, don't they, financially? But um, yeah, it does feel a bit, I don't know, going away feels a little bit like, what's the expression that fiddling Emperor Nero fiddling while Rome burns type of thing because obviously Covid in Greece is um, a lot less prevalent than it is in the UK at the moment but um, yes go on. Well originally we were going to York yeah and, um, <laughs> and we decided that just wasn't safe. <laughs> yes so yeah, so we, we decided on this, but um, yes, anyway, we're on our way up to Gatwick. We're in a queue of traffic. We're not even out of Devon yet. We're on the A303, and um, I shall come back to you a little bit later. That was a very long drive, and about four hours later, we have arrived at Gatwick Airport, and we are in the short stay car park in the south terminal, which is ghostly quiet. I mean, there's cars, but I haven't seen a single person since we arrived here. Which is most bizarre. Um, usually we use valet parking whereby you drive to the short stay car park in the terminal that you're flying from um, and they take your car away and park it somewhere and then bring it back to the short stay car park when you get back so you don't have to go on buses and stuff. Um, however valet parking is currently closed although it does reopen in the next week or so I understand. Um, so they're using this car park as a long-term car park because the south terminal is closed at the moment all the flights are going from the north terminal so we parked here and then we're going to get the shuttle across to the north terminal and the premier inn that we're staying at tonight is in the north terminal so that's the plan have my mask at the ready 
So this is the main drop off for the South Terminal, which is usually very, very busy. Sorry if I sound muffled, I have a cotton mask on. But it's just amazing how quiet it is. Spooky, you'll never see this again in your lifetime, I shouldn't think. Bizarre, isn't it? It is literally like being in some post-apocalyptic <laughs> film. I feel like I'm in a dystopian novel. Presumably there'll be a bit more life at the other terminal. And just for posterity's sake, the main entrance to the South Terminal at Gatwick, September 2020, almost completely devoid of human life in the shuttle to the North Terminal. It's 4 10 in the morning. <coughs> What's good about 4 10 in the morning? <laughs> well, nothing really. Time for bed? Yes. <laughs> I actually, had not a bad night's sleep. I usually sleep really badly the night before we do this fight. But um, yeah, I had an okay night's sleep. Not long enough, but hey ho, there we go. Um, so, stage in the Premier Inn, the airport, as you saw, was very dystopian and weird. And we walked through it last night. It'd be interesting to see what it's like this morning. The Premier Inn was pretty much as normal. It was much quieter than normal, much quieter than normal. But um, the only thing that was different in the room was that there was only two pillows. They usually have one pillow each. And we had to ask for extra pillows, which they left outside the room in a plastic bag because the staff aren't allowed to come into the room once you've checked into it which I guess makes sense um, other than that it was all as normal still got tea and coffee facilities and all of that stuff um, we went down to the bar and had a couple of drinks and then we had dinner that was all again as normal the menu in the restaurant was much smaller than it normally is but it's pretty rubbish here anyway, so um, it, it, it was fine. Uh, the service was very good, the people were nice, you had to wear masks obviously everywhere apart from when you're actually sitting down at a table and the vast, vast, vast majority of guests were wearing masks. I think we only saw two people without a mask and to be fair, once when Ashley got up to the loo he forgot his mask as well so I think it is, it's only the initial stages of the new rules of, around masks so perhaps people are um, still not remembering. Um, anyway, yes, Premier Inn is done and we are off to the airport in a minute. So we are at the check-in. The whole airport is way quieter than it normally is. But um, yeah, there's people around, but definitely a lot quieter than it normally is at this time of the morning. We've just gone through security. I'm not going to, Ashley's just getting his bag checked. I'm not going to turn the camera around because I don't think you meant to film in security. But it is super, super quiet. It feels very, very safe. Um, really, really super easy to social distance. Much better than even like going to the shops or anything. Lots of space. Very few people around. Um, feels a lot better than I thought it would, to be perfectly honest. We're now at the gate. We literally came straight to the gate from security, just grabbed a coffee from a machine. I feel more like a human being now I've had a coffee, although not much more like one. We've decided that our plan of attack is to get on the plane last after everybody else. Um, so that's what we're doing, they're boarding at the moment. But um, there's a couple of other people down there who've obviously got the same idea as us. So standard easy jet. They sent us all through the boarding gate and then we've just been queued up here in a big long corridor for about 10 minutes but 
removing now. But everybody did social distance, so it wasn't too bad. But not the best idea to herd a load of people through a gate when they're all sitting socially distanced. Well, yeah. Hey ho, we're off now anyway, so that's good. Okay. in Greece we've been here about five minutes um, our luggage was coming off the trolley as we came through and on the on the baggage thing as we came through immigration so we had to run to get it before it went back through the little door <laughs> and we went around again and um, yeah all very easy you have to two days before you fly or three days before you fly you have to apply for a PLF which is some sort of document to do with COVID and you have to do the same on the way back and they email you a QR code um, at midnight the night before your flight which was there when I woke up this morning and um, yeah that was all very simple just had to show that at immigration before you went into the baggage hall and that was finally one per family apparently the one to come back into Britain is more complicated to fill in but I'll let you know about that anyway we're just going to go and get our taxi so I'll speak to you in a bit this is the way to travel. They've sent a party bus for us. <laughs> Just the two of us. <laughs> Ridiculous. We have been to this hotel a lot of times. I think they must have sent it for us as a little joke. <laughs> it was literally, we got in there, they took some details, we had to sign some forms. Um, I think we had to sign a form agreeing not to sue the resort if we caught COVID here, which is fine, not a problem. Um, and well, how long were we there for? Like a total of 20 minutes maximum maybe? 20 minutes. Yeah, a maximum of 20 minutes and the same taxi, party bus thing, <laughs> hilarious, then brought us to this hotel, which is only like less than five minutes drive away. Um, so it was, yeah, really simple, really well organised, no, very little waiting. The test took 10 minutes to develop. I think it was less than 10 minutes actually. It was a finger prick test. It took, yes? Okay, to be fair, organising 60 million of the tests probably would have taken a bit longer. Who's going to organise 60 million? That's well, Boris's job, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that, it, it was all very simple and nice. And then we got here and we had welcome drinks and we caught up with all our friends, which was lovely. And we're now here. Um, I will film a little bit of the holiday for you to see at some point. I hope you enjoyed that little glimpse into what travel is like now. I have to say, overall, I felt a lot more comfortable about the whole journey than I thought I was going to. Would you say that was fair? Yeah, uh, I think now is probably a good time to travel. In two months' time, it may be different. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the number's rising. But, um, yeah, we, we felt very safe. We've even talked about being comfortable in terms of the amount of um you've just taken something out of the electrics all the lights have just gone off oh, sorry. yeah um we need to get another key as well yeah, yeah i think possibly go uh, it made me feel more confident about traveling um while this is going on and obviously if i catch COVID on the plane on the way home and won't feel quite so <laughs> confident but overall the whole experience was way better than I thought it would be the journey was the bit I was least looking forward to and it's turned out to be all right so I hope that was useful anyway thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for a lovely holiday vlog see you soon thanks for watching bye bye